Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I wanted to share this map with you. In 1963, um, prior to the comprehensive test ban going into effect, uh, the United States detonated 250 um, nuclear tests in Nevada, um, and this was a map of the, the fallout that occurred across the United States from these tests. Um, in fact, this period of time is called peak testing. And in comparison, the levels of radiation that have been coming over here from Fukushima are a thousand times higher than the radiation that we received in 1963 from all of these tests. During this year, SAT scores dropped 12%. So I can't imagine what it's doing to our kids' brains right now. And there's other maps that um, depict radiation levels as they were falling out um, across the United States and actually the entire Northern Hemisphere. But a lot of these maps only run through the middle of April. And this is a total release map. Um, you have probably seen the cesium dispersion, the xenon dispersion, the krypton dispersion, the iodine-131 dispersion. Uh, we don't have any maps even for plutonium or uranium, although we know plutonium ended up all the way in Boston and in parts of Europe. This map is ending April the 12th and nothing has stopped in Japan. The releases have been ongoing since March. They're not as high as they were in March, April, and May. That's when the levels were the most severe. But according to the graphs, if you've been watching my forecasts, um, the levels are going up. They've been going up since September, and especially since the middle of November. And with the um, situation at TEPCO being very uh, sketchy and a lack of, of information from the company that, that our researchers can um, decipher or try to extrapolate or predict um, how much we're actually being exposed to, it, it's going to be months and, and years before we actually find out. The only way we're going to find out is if we do a full-scale radioactive survey of the the water and soil in our country and what Japan has been doing and we don't have any um, maps like this yet in the United States is putting together low symptom um, charts of where people are experiencing sickness in their country and this is like an overall sickness map showing um, the red areas as being the highest and then we have a nosebleed map. Um, diarrhea map. Sore throat. Is it any wonder that people are possibly getting sick here? If you have friends that are teachers or educators or work in the school system, please try to talk to them about this. Um, I have gone around to the teachers and counselors in my own school district, and most of them have been um, pretty open to the, the research that I've done and and they've gone on to do their own research and are becoming concerned as well. I did have one bad experience with um, my children's elementary school teacher who actually kicked me out of the school for trying to talk to him about this. Um, he was afraid that I was going to somehow drag his name into a school board meeting and he said he didn't want to be my source as um, for people to go to to talk to about this. I, I cannot understand that and I'm not going to really waste any time trying to understand it, but 
we have kids at schools that are playing outside. They're playing um, on dirt and sand and in areas where there, there's been no, no kind of radiation survey done whatsoever. Um, they're standing outside waiting for buses and the rain and now in the snow. They're playing outside at recess. None of them, of course, are wearing any kind of masks or, or covering over their faces. Um, they are running cross country. They're taking in more air if they're exercising outdoors. I mean, right now, with the levels being as high as they are, kids should not be playing outside. And the water that they're drinking at school out of the drinking fountains isn't filtered. And the problem is that the school boards can't do anything about changing protocols unless the government tells them to change it, and which our government isn't doing. But I really feel that the more people that we talk to about this, it, the word gets out and they start talking about it at school meetings, um, that they will take action, they will take precautions, and that's really what needs to happen because we don't know how bad things really are. And it's going to be a while before we do, but for right now, um, according to the, the air graphs that are showing up and um, the, the levels that are being measured, there needs to be some kind of cooperation with the school districts to keep our kids safe when they're at school. We can do a lot for them when they're at home and when they're in our care. Um, but again, you know, the people that are watching these videos are only a very, very, very small portion of the population. 99% of people have no idea that this is going on. And we've got ocean dispersion maps. You know, we have um, air dispersion maps. We have levels that are, are being recorded and presented in, in early research. I think we have enough information right now to go on to try to make these kinds of decisions proactively. This, this is easy to manage at this stage, but when the kids start getting sick, it's not going to be. Well, you can look up some of these maps online, but again, they're, they're only really for um, March and parts of April. We don't have anything really recent, but I mean, what you do need to keep in mind is this has never stopped. This is continuously coming over here. Alaska, British Columbia, Pacific Northwest, California, I mean, the, the levels are high. and. Um, some of the emails that I've been receiving from, from people after seeing some of the videos that I put out about my kids being sick, they're noticing the same things. And their kids, um, look at the comments under the video that I put out about um, my kid's arm. And, and people in there saying that their, their six-year-olds came home um, with that kind of burn on their face in, in March and April. And there's things that you can do if you suspect that your child has been exposed or they had anything that might have been, you know, had the appearance of a sunburn, especially when the sun wasn't shining. Um, you can have their urine tested to see if they have cesium exposure. Um, if that would be positive, then you could have an ECG done, which is a very simple test. None of this is painful or traumatizing to the child in any way, but it's going to be traumatizing to them and it's going to hurt them their entire life if they get sick. We just need to make people more aware of this and use the data that we already have. We know what kind of damage this did to our kids and the levels from Fukushima were a thousand times higher than what's displayed on this map. That's all I gotta say.